having a little barbecue out here alongside Lake Opubco. Uh, it's, what's unique about this barbecue is that we cook brisket in the ground. Uh, everybody's having a good time, as you can see, lining up, having a feed. We did something unique. We took our brisket and we buried it in the ground uh, last night and it cooked for about 16 hours. The process started uh, two days ago when we dug a hole about three feet by two feet deep and we filled that with hot embers yesterday, cooked about four cubic feet of pecan wood down to about a foot of ash. Then we took our brisket and put it uh, on top of some bricks that were laying in the, in, in the embers and put a lid over the hole, buried the hole. We kept all of the heat in. There's a limited amount of oxygen that stays inside the pit. It burns off over, over many hours. It cooks low and slow, which is the key to good barbecue. Um, other than that, we've got some, uh, some pork tenderloin, some beans, some macaroni salad, potato salad, coleslaw, all the trimmings. But uh, we're going to show you how we did this uh, pit barbecue. We did it because, first of all, it's sort of the birth of barbecue. To understand it, maybe we thought, let's go back and, and see exactly how it works, how somebody might have thought of that. It's really ingenious and really simple. It takes a little bit of labor. But it's totally worth it. It's, uh, it's highly recommended. So enjoy. We're using four cubic feet of pecan wood to uh, light our fire. We're about halfway through right now. Here in a minute, we're gonna toss this one in with some good kindling and a little bit of lighter fluid, and we ought to be ready to go in an hour or so. Whenever you're cooking with this kind of fire, it's important to remember that you want this to be hot, but you don't want the logs to actually be on fire. So in order to do that, you've got to remember that the logs got to burn thoroughly. In order to do that, you have to go through there and rotate the logs every once in a while to make sure that they burn, completely burn through. You'll know that they're done whenever you see them turn white and mostly, mostly white and black and they start to crumble. That shows that there are all the moisture is out of them and that they're ashes and embers, which is what we want. All right, I'm going to soak this uh, wooden lid. Uh, in a perfect world, we'd have a, a steel or iron lid. But well, it's a lot cheaper and easier to have a piece of plywood. It'll work, but just for safety, I'm gonna soak it in water and then let it, let it I don't want it completely soak, but I do want it a little bit wet so that it won't burn up and break. All right, we got about a nine pound brisket here and I've uh, started out with a little bit of uh, mustard to make the surface tacky. I've got it on both sides and then a whole lot of rub, which uh, contains uh, paprika, chili powder, uh, brown sugar, salt and pepper, you name it, we got it. So we've got that all pressed in, so our next step is to wrap it up and stick it in the fire. Go. Say good night. The brisket turned out perfect, I think. Uh, we pulled it out of the ground. We put it in the ground at 7.30 Friday night. We pulled it out of the ground at one o'clock Saturday. It, it was cooked. We, uh, then, we then put it on the, on the grill off with no direct heat just to keep it warm while we did all our other stuff. The, the finished product, I think you're, you're gonna see here in a little bit, turned out pretty good. Everybody's gonna be eating it. And, uh, and I, I don't think there's much we would do different. <laughs> 